I think most hit shows, uh, the few that I've been on, Chico and the Man, Welcome Back, Cotter, Murphy, Brown, and Frazier, the two, like, the four, like, biggest hit shows I've, I've designed, all have one thing in common. There's a flow and an inevitability about it, and they're pretty easy. When the, when the script is so well-focused and the characters are so well-defined, uh, the designing of it is like falling off of a log. Stunning apartment. Oh. The palette is pure, subtle elegance. The detailing, well, it's inspired. And the furnishings? Oh, dear. <laughs> is there a chair? What it used to be is the art director was the head guy, and you had assistant art directors who assisted you. Then as the things went on and became more sophisticated or whatever, they start calling the head guy the production designer. And then the people who work and support your view are called art directors. Uh, to me, it's pretty much the same. The production designer is now the guy who has the concept and deals with the script and the producers, and it's his vision. And the art directors are the very valuable, important people who carry out that, that vision. I have to thank you for putting me in touch with my anger. I had no idea how therapeutic it was to just pick something up and smash it. Hey, baby, I hear the blues are calling. Toss salads and scrambled eggs. Hello, Gerard. I'm listening. What we wanted was a fairly contemporary, up-to-date, nice radio station. And it just happened that ABC, not our network, but ABC Radio had opened. Someone knew that they had opened a new radio facility here in Los Angeles. So we called them, called the general manager, and they were kind enough to invite us down. We took a tour of their facility. They allowed us to take pictures. And we were really grateful because so many of the details in the radio station, the whole padded wall treatment to the light switch, those rheostat dimmers on the light switch, to the curb on the counters, so many of those details that give it that nice look that we've established really came from ABC Radio here in town. And that's a small, shallow space. And I'm always pleased when you see it on camera because the hallway that runs upstage and we can actually shoot up there, it gives the sense of a larger space. We try to keep abreast of what's really happening and we'll change the mics or we'll change the feeds and try to uh, keep, it, keep it up to date. This is Dr. Fraser Crane wishing you all good mental health. I mean that today more than ever. Oh, Niles! Oh, Fraser! What a serendipitous event. How did you discover my favorite coffee bar? Well, the radio station's right across the street. I did my first show today. Yes, you did, didn't you? Well, good to see you. Have a nice day. I'd visited a friend in Seattle shortly before we did the pilot. And I was just struck that, my God, you people in Seattle live on coffee. I've never seen so many coffee shops in my life. So I came back and talked to our producers. Can we make this a real coffee house? And they said, absolutely. That's a Seattle kind of thing to do. And then I went out and started photographing all the local coffee places uh, that we could find in Los Angeles, little funky places and, and chain places. And there weren't that many. We probably went to two or three on Melrose Avenue until we had enough photos to kind of compile a look that we felt comfortable with. Sit down, Niles. <laughs> and so instead of the Starbucks slicker or contemporary look, we wanted a real warm, funky, older look, like a place that had been here for, uh, you know, many years. Are you ready to order? Uh, yes. Double decaf, non-fat latte, mm, medium foam, dusted with just the faintest whisper of cinnamon. I'll have a black coffee. It's a small space, but we had three different versions of this. We had the big cafes in Nervosa, when we have the whole side of the stage for it. We had a middle-sized version where we're sitting where we are now, and we had a little eensy-teensy version that we put under the bleachers over there. And sometimes we get so many sets on the stage that we have to go to the little eensy teensy, which means the poor director has only this <laughs> much to shoot. So we have a, we have a, three versions going. My brother will have a decaf. <laughs> Sharon Valjean was our decorator on the pilot, and Mark Brown, who works with her, uh, I they just went out and found the stuff and brought in pictures of things. We decided, uh, you know, what to get and decided to make the little reading area up there with the little library where people could sit and hang out and read. And it was kind of neat to do because now we're so used to this look and so used to this ambiance that at the time everyone would come in and go, wow, that's really cool, you know. Here we are, one latte, one coffee, and one cookie. 
I think they call this thing a biscotti. <laughs> no need to talk down to the man. Off you go. We worried about this double door. I like this, this uh, uh, cold weather kind of inner entry. And we worried that that would be too much of a delay from the time they entered until the time they got into the room. But it's never been a problem, and everyone's dealt with it really well. And uh, it came together nicely. Dad, thought we had an agreement. And he doesn't roll around on my sofa, and I don't throw him in front of a bus. No one has asked for plans of the Cafe Novoso, the radio station, but a lot of people uh, write in or call in and want to know oh, the Chanel sofa. They're, they're anxious to know where they can get a sofa like that. The fireplace is something that people want to know. They're hoping that it exists someplace that they could buy. And oftentimes we'll send a, a copy of the drawings, and if they want to have it built, they, they can. The doors in his apartment, they all want to know where they can get those doors, which were custom-made here, and the wood is really painted. It's not even real. But uh, some people have indicated, they haven't sent me the pictures, but they've indicated they have taken some of the ideas and, and uh, put them in their own homes. Uh-oh. Two syllables every homeowner loves to hear upon entering the door. <laughs> Wendell Johnson was my art director on the pilot in the first season or two, and we just found this a joyous experience. And the, the three guys, the three producers, were so in sync with what we were doing, and I was so thrilled when they wanted his apartment to be contemporary and not stuffy and old-fashioned, and delighted that they wanted to do a, a little coffee shop, a little, a little uh, diner, Every, in the radio station. Everything just kind of fell together very quickly and very easily. Are you out of your mind? A gun just went off in here. Niles bought a starter's pistol. Yes. And there's no need to get snippy. Accidents happen, you know. Oh, I'm sorry, was I snippy? <laughs> Every person on this set is supportive of each other. Every person is generous. Every person is, is, the goal is only to do your best work. Uh, from day one, we were all given the assignment, just give us your best work. And they don't nickel and dime you. They don't second guess you. There is just a feeling of freedom and creativity that is unique in my experience. It's the one and only. Now what happens is it's ruined me for all other series. You see, I could comfortably retire. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, it's, it's in that it's been an extraordinary experience in that way. Hi, I'm Roy Christopher, production designer on Frasier, and welcome to Frasier's apartment in Seattle, uh, Washington. And here uh, we're at the we're at the front door area of the apartment, and right inside the front door, because we're in Seattle and they do get a bit of rain, we have uh, the umbrella, the umbrella stand, and where people. Uh, drop their, their umbrellas. I, I never think it rains quite enough in the show, but it's, it's something difficult to deal with uh, every week. So every once in a while, we get a good rainstorm. Uh, there's a cabinet here, um, kind of in a postmodern style. There's, there's Eddie's leash always, always standing by for, for Martin and Eddie to take that little stroll. Uh, we try to personalize the set as much as possible and really make it as real as possible so you believe it really is where Fraser and his, his family lives. For instance, right inside the door, there's a picture of the son, Frederick. And over the years, the prop department, the set decorators update the picture, and we keep uh, getting new pictures of the actor who plays Frederick, and, and he gets a little older as the, as the years, years go on. Um, the things in the cabinet are really, and throughout the apartment, are kind of a an eclectic collection of things that Frazier has collected uh, over the years. Um, he's traveled widely. Uh, he has an interest in primitive and African art, pre-Columbian art, um, and texture and color. And, and, and uh, you know, he's a man, he's a, he's a connoisseur of, of many things. It, it was a great thrilled to design the set because you're given a leading character who is so sophisticated and so worldly and has such exquisite taste that for, for myself and the original set decorator, Sharon Valjean, and for Ron Olson, who's our, uh, our current set decorator, uh, it's been a joy to, uh, to bring to life the world of Fraser, Fraser Crane. Here to my left is a piece of sculpture that was very prominently featured in the first two seasons of, of Fraser. We call him Froggy. And uh, it, 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 it's kind of, a, again, a humorous kind of, kind of touch in the set. Later, as the, the series went on, we, we uh, changed that to something else, one of the few things in the set that has been uh, altered.
The area behind the couch here is one area that we do change, keep updating, keep changing the objects on so that there's a sense that real people live here and they don't just have the same thing year after year. Um, and in the, the first two years, uh, it altered a little bit and now we, we tend to change it a little more. Uh, the little uh, stack tables here are just a, a unique contemporary design. It's just kind of quirky and, and humorous. This is one of the key areas of the set, primarily the couch and the fireplace area, people in the family gather, and you know, it's a, a very uh, critical area of the set. And when I read the script of, of the show, the first of the pilot script, the creators, David, David, and Peter, had called for a very specific couch. And this couch is an exact replica of the one Coco Chanel had in her Paris atelier. The real couch, her real couch, is something like 12 feet long and four feet deep. It's a very huge piece. So we researched at the decorator, Sharon and I researched it and got photos of it, and then had this special couch built uh, with wonderful suede cloth, uh, actual suede, and uh, as a reproduction of the Coco Chanel couch. Since then, it's been manufactured by a few manufacturers. It's a very popular kind of piece of, of furniture. Probably the, the most enjoyed piece of furniture on the set is Dad's crummy chair. Um, I remember when we were doing the pilot, you know, the whole set was looking very spiffy and very glamorous the first, uh, when we were getting ready for the first show. And then, of course, we had to bring in this chair. Unfortunately, there wasn't anything really awful enough on the market. Uh, we couldn't find anything new or anything used that, that the producers uh, thought was, was really ugly enough. So Sharon Valjean went out and found this old uh, recliner and then went and shopped for a lot of really uh, ugly fabric, and finally we found something that everyone agreed really was awful enough, and then we had the, ch the uh, uh, chair upholstered and then aged and uh, uh, doctored up so it really, really looked disreputable. And I loved the first moment when they carried this chair into the set, in the pilot, actually, uh, because it said everything it, would, it needed to say about the father and about his relationship to Fraser. So everyone loves the chair, loves to sit in the chair, and uh, uh, we've actually built whole stories around the chair. Oh, look, Dad, as dear as I'm sure that this piece is to you, I, I just don't think it goes with anything here. I know, it's eclectic. <laughs> Up here is a, uh, a reproduction of the famous Eames chair. Again, in the original script, they called for things like that. They said, you know, the Coco Chanel couch, and he should have an Eames chair. And it was really wonderful as a designer to be doing a, a situation comedy or a comedy series where you could deal in that kind of, that level of design. But here we have the terrace. Uh, people always uh, in Seattle always want to know where this, this condominium is located because um, they would like to, to have a place in, in, this, in this building with this view. Unfortunately, where this view exists is there's no buildings. It's up on the side of a, of a, of a craggy cliff. We sent a camera crew up there and they photographed it. And we had this backing made and uh, we sent a crew up to take the pictures. We made the backing here. It's 40 feet wide and 20 feet tall. And it wasn't ready until two days before we shot the pilot. We didn't know if it would work or not, and it did. But we had these Roman shades made so that in case it didn't work, we could close off the whole view with the drapery. Uh, luckily, we've never had to, never had to do that. So that, that aspect worked really well. Being in, on a high rise in Seattle or a high rise any, any place else, I mean, you, you have to have a, a telescope. It's also been featured in a couple of stories, and it's just kind of a, an old piece that uh, Fraser's had for many years, and it, uh, we thought it looked really nice in the, in the set. Down here, we have the dining area where a lot happens. I just asked Marty in the prop uh, set decorating department if I couldn't remember if we kept a permanent thing on the table or not, but he said, usually not because something's always happening here in every show. Every show they're eating breakfast, Martin's eating, they're giving a dinner party, uh, something like that. So this became a very uh, active and pivotal part of the set. Uh, we're up in the area where the uh, grand piano is. Uh, interesting background story to this is prior to the uh, pilot, they never indicated in the script that there was a piano in, in the room. And then all of a sudden, uh, the producers realized that, that Kelsey Grammer and David Hyde Pierce were both really accomplished musicians and played play the piano beautifully. And once the set was all designed, we were building it in the mill, and it kind of ended here in front of the piano area. And I had a call from David Lee, one of the co-creators, who said, oh, we, we forgot to tell you, we've added an area with the grand piano. And it was like, whoa, okay. And uh, as it turned out, it was a great blessing because it caused 
cause me to push the set out, make it larger, and then create the see-through from the music area into the kitchen, which really added a lot of depth and a lot of interest in the set. And it's been wonderful to have it there because both actors have played from time to time in, in the show. This brings us to the entrance uh, to the kitchen uh, set that we, we do many, many, many scenes in. Outside the kitchen, we have more cupboards and cabinets, I should say, with artifacts that Frazier has collected over the years. Frazier, like myself and our decorators, we really hate just bare walls. So, so it's nice to have little niches and lighting and, and texture and things he's collected from around the world in, in the set. A little writing desk over here to my left, a little touch of color there in, in that that chair, and uh, this has all been here since, since the pilot, and uh, we're all very comfortable with it. Behind me is the uh, kitchen, uh, small, kind of realistic scale. Uh, it wasn't in the first show. I think we introduced the kitchen the second show. The first show, we just kind of had it closed off, and then by the time we got to the second show, it was like, okay, now you're faced with uh, putting a kitchen in this very tiny space, but actually, I like it a lot. It seems to have uh, worked out well over the years.